Well, once again, we have hurricanes, we have strong hurricanes, but no landfalls on the United States. We have really lucked out during the month of September because if you think about it, we've had three hurricanes. They've all been major hurricanes, two Category 5s, one Category 4, and we're about to uh, get uh, the fourth hurricane of the season. All right, let me take you out to the satellite picture uh, here this morning. Now, this is Hurricane Umberto. You can see it off to the east. This is 65 degrees uh, west, by the way. Here are the Bermuda Islands. Here's, of course, Imelda. These are only separated uh, by about 650 miles or so. Now, the story with Imelda was how slow it took to develop. Now, you'll notice on the satellite pictures, we'll move over here a little bit, you can clearly see what is the overall movement of the cloud structure right in toward the Carolinas. And remember on Friday, we talked about if there would be a landfall, it was going to be in this area. Now, we talked also about the idea that Imelda would have to move out in front of Umberto. It had to stay out ahead of it to make that move in toward the United States but it was slow to develop. But I want to show you this because I think by looking at some of the modeling, you could see that it was a closer call than you might have thought here. Let me explain here as we, let me go to the, uh, let me go to the uh, different uh, view here really quickly. Uh, okay. Let me explain as we take a look at some of the modeling here. So here's what the idea was on Friday. We, you would have this upper low here, then you would have a meld, uh, then you would have Umberto, and it was a tug of war, the upper low pushing this way, a melda pushing this way, which would win. Well, a lot of it has to also do with the speed of the system. Let me explain. I'm going to zoom in on my maps a little bit here. So let's go to eight o'clock this morning. So here's a melda. I'm going to put it on X. It's right in here, right? It's right in here. However, we had thought that there was a possibility that Imelda, instead of being here, right, was going to be up in here, almost at the same latitude as Jacksonville. I want to focus your attention right here and look where this piece of energy moves today. There it is right here. I'm going to put the X on it right here. All right, you see it? Now watch the way this energy moves. This afternoon... This evening, see where it goes? Let's go back. See that energy right here? I want you to focus on this box here. Watch how that energy moves. Where? Into the Carolina coast, right in here, tonight. So that's the difference. Instead of being down here, if it was up in here, then we would have had a very close encounter. Very close encounter. But it stayed farther south, and that's why, as we move forward here, we're going to see Imelda take that right turn because it's going to be forced by Umberto off to the north. Why? Because Umberto outran it. So, close call, but thankfully, once again, we're not going to have a landfall. All right. Moving forward here, let's take a look at the hurricane season as a whole. It's a six-month season, but the majority of the storms are when they occur during September and mostly October. Right in here, well, you could say August through October 15th. Let's even say by the end of the month. This is the majority of the action. But the seasons do change a little bit here. The areas do differ. Look at the area that you look for for development during the month of September. The entire Atlantic Basin is usually open for business. Now, the last couple of years, there's been so much wind shear that we've been looking a little closer to home. Watch how it changes. Watch the area change. There it is in September. Here's October. You start bringing it in, and certainly that's the case by the time we get into the latter half of October. So, what do conditions look like right now across the Atlantic Basin? Well, it's a microcosm of what we've seen so far this year. What I want to do is I want to show you the wind shear product moving forward here. Let me get your bearings straight so you know where we're looking at here. This is the west coast of Africa. This is Florida. 
in here. These are the lesser Antilles right in here. Look at all of the wind shear this evening. Where you see this dark coloring is wind shear. Almost all of the Atlantic is covered in wind shear. Let's go a week from now. Let's go a week from now. So this is Monday, October uh, 6th. Again, here's the west coast of Africa, right? Here is Florida and the United States. Here's Cuba. So even if a tropical wave can get through this area where you don't see the wind shear, that's where you don't see any colors, you still have pockets of wind shear here, here, and here in the Gulf, the Caribbean, and in the uh, uh, right near the islands. Let's go to the end. Let's go to a week then. Uh, October 12th. Again, look at the wind shear across most of the Atlantic here. But you'll notice this, lowering wind shear. Where? In there, across the Caribbean, and also into the uh, Gulf, uh, into the Gulf. And that's why as we move forward, we will continue to watch this area mid to late October. Don't look for a tropical wave coming across the tropical Atlantic. I think we have to look for homegrown development in the Gulf and also in the uh, Caribbean. And that's the message for the feed this morning. Stay with us.